Live then he love me, die then he saved me, bury then he carried my sins away, rose and he justified, free me forever. One day he's coming back, one glorious day. Live then he loved me, die then he saved me. Buried and he carried my sins away. Lows and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, one glorious day. Lived and he loved me, died and he saved me. Buried and he carried my sins away. Rose and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, one glorious day. One day he's coming back, one day he's coming back, one day he's coming back, one glorious day. Lived and he loved me, died and he saved me. Buried and he carried my sins away. Rose and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, one glorious day. One day he's coming back, one day he's coming back, one day he's coming back. One day he's coming back, 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 one glorious day. Live and he loved me, died and he saved me, buried and he carried my sins away, rose and he justified. Free me forever. One day he's coming back, one glorious day. Lived and he loved me, died and he saved me. Buried and he carried my sins away. Rose and he justified, free me forever. One day he's coming back, one day he's coming back, one day he's coming back, one glorious day. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for how good he's been to each and every one of us. It was the Lord that woke us up this morning. It was the Lord that started us on our way. It was the Lord that protected us all day long that is keeping us even to this very hour. We praise him and thank him for all that he is doing for us. We thank and praise him for all that he's doing to us. And we thank and praise him for all he's yet to do. Amen. Because God is truly good and his mercy endureth forever. And we thank him for his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross uh, not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Amen. Gave up his life that we might have a right to the tree of life. And not only that, he gave us uh, an opportunity that we might receive of God's inheritance. Amen. That we might uh, not only be saved for now, but be saved for everlasting life. And we thank him because he gives us purpose. He gives us reason for living. He's the reason why we live. He's the, as uh, my brother, what's his name? Uh, that singer, Fred, uh, Kirk Franklin, he's the reason why we sing. Amen. So we thank God. We thank God once again for all that he is doing. And we thank him for his grand mercy and his power that he sheds upon us. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly do want to remember uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. It's a good thing to be saved. It's, we should all desire to be saved. 
And it's not a, uh, such a thing that you're too spiritual, thank you, Lord, or you're too, too godly-minded. You're supposed to be godly-minded. You're supposed to be spiritual. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're supposed to be spiritual, spiritual-minded. Uh, you're supposed to love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and your strength. It's when we get carnal-minded, uh, when we get into trouble. The Bible says that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So you're supposed to be all the way holy, all the way spiritual, all the way uh, in God. Uh, there's not a, such a thing that you can be halfway in and halfway out. There's not a, such a thing that you can be over spiritual. Thank you, Lord, when you're walking with the Lord. I have a reason for saying that. I want people to, to grasp that and understand that. Amen. Thank you, Lord, as you walk with God. God wants you to uh, be continuously uh, having your mind stayed on Him. As we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, um, we certainly do want to remember our Bible study on today as we begin to go into this Word of God. And we'll be going until 7 o'clock. Amen. And um, then we'll be moving forward uh, with our exam for those that are here at Christian Ministries. So let every heart pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come boldly to the throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need and our time of trouble. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is here, that you send forth your word, send forth your anointing, send forth your power. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to build us up and give us that inheritance that is among them that are sanctified. Bless our Bible study on today. Bless each and every request that's been made on. Bless each and every unspoken request in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And for our online uh, givers, thank you, Lord. You still have an opportunity to sow seed and to give into the kingdom. Uh, electronically through our Tithely. So if you go to Tithely.com uh, and look up Christian Ministries, you'll find Christian Ministries, and then you enter in your particular information, and then you're still able to give. Thank you, Lord. And as we have concluded our uh, transition uh, for wisdom, and as I said earlier, We'll be having our actual final exam quiz up on that. Um, and, but we want to start um, our new uh, session here uh, that we'll be teaching. We'll be teaching tonight on the purpose of vision. The purpose of vision. And uh, I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter number 3. 1 Samuel chapter number 3. And we'll be dealing with the purpose of vision. The purpose of vision. And uh, the scripture says in Proverbs uh, 29, 18, without a vision, the people perish. Amen. And in the book of Habakkuk, it tells us to write the vision and make it plain so that he that read it uh, can run with it. So as we get ready in our next session here, we're going to talk about the purpose of vision. And as we have stated that our scripture is found in tonight, uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 3. And I'm going to read uh, it's 21 verses. I'm going to read that <laughs> in your hearing uh, because we're, our lesson is coming from that particular chapter. And I want you to uh, go along with me and indulge me uh, for a little while so that we can obtain some information from this particular chapter. Uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 3 and verse number 1 says, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. 
And the word of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, the eye and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. Verse number three, and it says, And Ur, the lamp of God, went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Verse number four, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not lie down again, and he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel, and Samuel rose up and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. He And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. First Samuel 3 and 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. 1 Samuel 3 and 9, Thou therefore, Eli, said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, the Lord, for the Lord thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 1 Samuel 3 and 10, And the Lord came and stood and called at the, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do the things in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against, against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house when I began, and I will also make an end. 1 Samuel 3 and 13, For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Verse 14, And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offerings forever. 1 Samuel 3 and 15, And the Lord and Samuel lay upon until the morning, and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, and he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is this thing that the Lord hath said unto thee? I pray thee. Hide not from me. God so do to thee, and more also, if thy hide anything from me, and all the things which he hath said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. Verse 19. And Samuel grew, 
and the Lord was with him, and did let none of the words fall to the ground, did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan unto even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established uh, to be the prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I did something unconventional that I don't normally do, but I read that entire passage of Scripture, that entire chapter to you, so that we could be able to glean from it. There's some things in this particular chapter that we need to glean, and our, our, our subject tonight is the purpose of vision. The purpose of vision. That's going to be our study uh, uh, for at least the next several weeks. The purpose of vision. And my purpose for reading uh, that entire chapter, 1 Samuel 3, uh, uh, verses 1, uh, through, what is it, uh, 21, is that I want us to glean from it what, what the scriptures or what uh, students of the Bible call timeless truths, timeless truths. And uh, simply put, a timeless truth is uh, something that has literally uh, been revealed and what God has shown us that is true that he wants us to glean from his scriptures. It's actually principles that we uh, uh, receive from God's word so that we can apply them to our life. And the Bible is filled with timeless truths. It's filled with timeless truths. The, the scripture tells us God's word is line on line, precept on precept, here a little, there a little. And and there's no private interpretation of the Bible. The Bible is written so that there are themes that are in the Bible that we might pick up on so that we'll be able to apply them, to, so that we can be able to receive them. God wants us to gain the knowledge of the scriptures. He wants us to gain the understanding of the scriptures. And he wants us to receive the timeless truths so that we can be able to apply them to our lives. So as we begin to look here at the scripture then, uh, verse number one, and it says, uh, talking about Samuel, you know that Samuel was a special child. Uh, he was special because his mother, Hannah, uh, was childless, and she was persecuted by uh, um, Peniel, uh, a woman that was married uh, to, uh, he had two wives, uh, Hannah and Peniel. And, pardon me? Kaikane, what's her name? His name was Elkanah. Hell, his name was Elkanah, thank you. <laughs> they got some names up in there, don't they? <laughs> yes, and, and he had two wives, Peniel and Hannah. And Hannah was persecuted because she was childless. And she entreated the Lord. She prayed to God that God would give her a son. And she said to the Lord, if you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. And God blessed her and gave her a son. And his name was Samuel. And, he, and she gave him back to the Lord. And he grew up in the house of the Lord um, um, under the tutelage of Eli, who was the head priest at that particular time. Amen. So as we begin to see then, uh, it says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And that just means that Eli was Samuel's men uh, uh, mentor. Eli was Samuel's mentor. And uh, Sam, Eli uh, was the priest. He was the priest over the house of the Lord. And notice it says, And the word 
of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And that, that, that particular statement there is saying that the word of the Lord was precious, meaning that the word of the Lord was rare. Uh, God has spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob face to face. God had spoken to Moses uh, and Joshua face to face. But after that time, after Joshua's time, uh, uh, there came a time where they said the time of the judges, wherein there were uh, various people that were over the children of Israel. It was different people. Barak was a judge. De Deborah was a judge. Even Samuel was a judge. Uh, uh, Samson was a judge. Gideon was a judge. Those were different people that were in charge of Israel over a course of 300 years. They had judges. And during that time, if you read the book of Judges, it will tell you, let you know the, the, uh, the how can you say it, the lack of restraint Israel had because they would, they would walk upright, then they would uh, fall into sin, get punished by God, and cry out to God for help, and God would send the judge, one of those judges in, to, to gain the victory for them over the hand of the enemy, and they would walk upright for a season, and then they would fall back into their sin. They would fall back into their sin. It would be like uh, uh, criminals that are recidivists. They, 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 they do a crime and do the time, get out, and, and, and go right back into crime. You follow me? Recidivists. Habitual sinners. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We don't want to be habitual sinners. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. My God. Amen. Um, so we see here then that, 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 uh, at, the period of that 300 years when it headed toward the end of the judges, notice that the word of the God, the word of God had spoken less with, between the prophets. It had, uh, the word of God had God, because of the, help me here Holy Ghost, because of the wickedness of the leaders, because of the wickedness of the people, God had stopped revealing himself to the people. Follow me? Because of the evil deeds and the evilness of the leaders, God had stopped revealing himself to the people. Amen? First timeless truth. First timeless truth. That God will... Uh, uh, withhold his word from the people who show that their uh, uh, that their conduct or through their conduct they don't want to receive and obey God's word. In other words, let me just make it plain that that God will withhold his revelation. God will withhold his word from people who don't want to receive him whose conduct shows that they don't want to line up with him. It's important that uh, if you want to be a seeker of God, if you want to be a, a, a person in whom God uses, that when God reveals his word to you, you receive it and apply it. Your next revelation uh, of God depends on it. Amen? Y'all follow me? All right, well, let me move on quickly. Thank you, Lord. I can get lost in all of this. <laughs> all right, so we see here that verse, number one. And it says, and the word of the Lord was precious. That means that the word of the Lord was rare. It was rare. There was no open vision that God had stopped speaking to his people through his leaders. That's a dangerous place to be in. 
Thank you, Lord. Because the leaders, they should be able to receive the vision from the Lord. To be able to speak to the people with thus saith the Lord. Uh, I find myself, this is me, Pastor Frank Quinn, Bishop Frank Quinn. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I preach a sermon, when I preach a message on Sunday, I, I often go to and search out other people's message messages uh, uh, on that particular day. And I do that for a couple reasons. I do it for, uh, for my own edification that I may receive something. But I'm also looking for, looking for confirmation huh, of a word of God. Because God doesn't just speak to one person. Amen? God speaks to us all. We are a body of Christ. And, and oftentimes, uh, I hear what, what, what God has said to me come out of the mouth of other preachers. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Uh, have y'all have y'all noticed that? Uh, that I could be preaching something and you can go somewhere else and you can hear it? Uh, that's confirmation. Uh, that, that tells us we ought to pay closer attention. Amen? At least we let these things slip. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now, God speaks to us. Now, notice here in the scripture. And he said, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days and there was no open vision that God had stopped speaking because the people were wicked. The leaders were wicked. Amen? Thank you, Lord. When, when you have wicked people and you got wicked leaders, God will stop speaking. Amen? Thank you, Lord. That's why it's so important huh, that you pray for the man or the woman of God. Hallelujah. If the blind lead the blind, where are they going? In the ditch. Amen? And I am determined, hallelujah, not to go into a ditch. Amen? All right. Now, here we go. You ready? So, uh, verse number two. And it came to pass that at that time when Eli lay down in the place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And that just simply means there's no real spiritual connection to that. It's just telling you that Eli was old. Amen? Eli was old. Verse number three. And he said, in Ur, uh, the lamp of God went out in the temple and the Lord, uh, in the temple of the Lord, uh, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down. Uh, in, in the temple of God, uh, you had the ark of the covenant, which, which was housed in the holies of holies, in the most holy place, wherein the, the high priest went in once a year to offer up sacrifice unto the Lord. And on that Ark of the Covenant uh, rested. Y'all see the pictures? You got the two cherubims and the seraphims facing each other. Amen? And on that seat it's called the mercy seat or which is called the bema. Thank you, Lord, wherein uh, when they would uh, go in once a year, they would sprinkle the sacrifice if he or he was holy. <laughs> Hallelujah. He would be able to perform it. If he wasn't holy and he went into there, he'd be struck dead. Amen? So, so they sprinkled the blood upon the mercy seat in expectation that God would have mercy upon us for all of our sins. So um, uh, outside that uh, holies of holies was the holy place. And that's where the candlestick was. And the candlestick uh, was to burn from uh, evening until morning. Amen? And what this scripture is telling us, because it was getting ready to go out, was that God had begun to speak to Samuel in the morning. Amen? Now that's, that's another timeless truth, that, that God will speak to you. He will begin to speak to you early in the morning. And there's a couple reasons for that, because God wants to be the first thing on your mind. 
Before the enemy can get to you, God wants to get to you. So we as the saints of God ought to be uh, aware uh, of, of God speaking to us early in the morning. God can speak to you anytime, don't get me wrong. But God, by habit, amen, will speak to you in the morning. That's why you wake up sometimes. Amen. And you don't know why you woke up. Why? And Because and, God wants to speak to you. That's the time where you should give time to the Lord so that you can hear his voice, so that he can give you instruction for the day. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen? Amen? All right, let's move on. Thank you, Lord. Uh, notice here, uh, verse number four. It says that the Lord called Samuel, called him early in the morning, and he answered, Hear am I. Verse number five, and he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou hast uh, callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord, verse number six, called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou called me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Verse number seven. Nope, hold on. Now, yeah, let me read verse number seven. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Now, next time was true. Time was true. That, that Samuel... When he was called, he confused that voice with Eli's voice because he didn't know God's voice. Amen? It's easy to be confused with other voices if you don't know the voice of God. Amen? Voices all the time speak to you. You got your own voice. Huh? The devil you, speaks to you. He's got a voice. Amen? Other people uh, speak to you has a voice. And God has a voice. Amen? If you don't know God's voice, it's easy to be confused. Amen? That's what the problem was with Eli. He was confused because God had not yet revealed himself to him. People will be confused if God has not revealed himself to them. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. In my counseling sessions, when I, I'm, I'm counseling with people, and people tell me what thus saith the Lord. Amen? This is what God is saying to me. And you'd be surprised how far off that individual is because they haven't, they, have, they don't know the Lord. In other words, when God speaks to you, his will and his word will be found in the scriptures. God will never contradict himself. Amen? Never. God will never contradict himself. People have told me some outlandish things. Amen? And if, and if I were to say them, they'll, they'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but people have told me some stuff. Uh, that, 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 that God wanted me to be in this relationship uh, when they were already in another relationship. Mary, uh, God told me that I was going to do such and such. Uh, uh, that ain't God. Uh, that ain't God. That goes against his commandment. That thou shalt not commit adultery. Amen. God will never cause you to violate his will. And that, that, that's because they didn't know the voice of God. Amen. Uh, and, and that brings us to another timeless truth here. Notice what it says. Verse number 7. Now Samuel.
the Lord, uh, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Now, there's, there's, there's a process in knowing God. Amen? There's a process in knowing him. Samuel was just entering into the process. So when you're young in the Lord, you know, uh, you may not be able to discern whether it's the Lord or not. But, but then shall you know uh, if you continue on. So, so being young in the Lord, being young in the Lord uh, is a start. Amen? Hallelujah. You got to start somewhere. Am I right? Hallelujah. But, but, but the key is, is to continue. Amen? That's the key, to continue. And that's what, Sam, that's what Samuel did. He continued. Amen? All right, now, let's look here again. He says, verse number seven, he says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and that know there means relationship. Amen? Samuel was not in a strong relationship with God. His relationship with the Lord was just beginning. Amen? That's a good thing, isn't it? Uh, you got to start somewhere, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, notice uh, uh, verse number seven. And he said, neither was the word of the Lord, what? Yet what? Revealed unto him. That word revealed means vision. Amen? The, the vision of the Lord wasn't yet revealed to him. Amen? That's what vision means. So now God is getting ready now to turn back to the people and show uh, Samuel the vision. Y'all with me? Now, let's look here. Let's look here for a moment. Uh, uh, Samuel was young. Eli was old. You would think that God would be dealing with Eli as opposed to Samuel. Amen? But, but Eli had turned away from the Lord. Amen? Eli had turned away from the Lord. So, God got Samuel. Now notice this. I want you to notice this. God got Samuel not because of his youth. In other words, God is not one that is his promotion. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Holy Ghost is helping me. His promotion is not based on one's longevity with him. I'm going to try to hear me. God's promotion in the body of Christ is not based on your longevity. How long you've been over here. God's promotion is based on your faithfulness with him. How can he trust you? Amen? That's huge. Thank you, Lord, because if you're looking to expand and grow with God, to receive anything from the Lord, you have to be faithful. Huh? You have to be faithful. If you're going to uh, uh, lead God's people, if you're going to receive of God uh, his, his riches and or receive of God his blessings, be a good steward, you have to be faithful. That's a timeless truth. You have to be faithful. Y'all need to write down these timeless truths. You'll see them again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Faithfulness is a timeless truth with God. Amen? And you'll see that theme of faithfulness throughout the Bible. Huh? So, so God's using Samuel not because of his age. <laughs> God is using Samuel because of his faithfulness. <laughs> Y'all with me? Hallelujah. By God. By God. 
There was, there was one person uh, that said, well, how come, how, how come you being followed? How come you following that young man as a pastor? Amen? And, and the, the answer should be uh, that God is not looking at his age. God is looking at his faithfulness. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and we, can, we can look at that timeless truth. Daniel, when he was used by God, young. Joshua, when he was used by God, young. And a name of a king uh, escapes me, but he was seven years old. God began to use him. Young. David, young. Ruddy. Huh? But he was faithful. Uh, you got to be faithful if you want God to use you. So don't let your age disqualify you. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. Don't let people disqualify you. Amen? Hallelujah. And it wasn't based on what Samuel knew, but it was based on his faithfulness. Amen? Um, you ain't got to be the brightest light bulb uh, in the bunch. Just be faithful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. I found this on the web. Oh. oh. Siri talking now. She want to interrupt my Bible study. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Siri and I got a bad relationship. <laughs> I was asking Siri some questions. Uh, uh, one time, and Siri said, okay, you're done. It's time for you to go to bed. We got a tenuous relationship. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, verse number, let's drop down. All right. Uh, verse number eight. And he said, and the Lord called Samuel again the third time and he rose up and went to Eli and said here am I for thou didst call me now notice verse Eli perceived that word perceived means to understand he understood that the Lord called him amen he understood that the Lord called the child it is emphasizing the child because he didn't know the Lord's voice. Amen? Now notice. Uh, Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it, shall, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt speak uh, the uh, Lord, for thy servant hear it. And Samuel went and lay down in his place. Notice then. What was the instruction that Eli gave to Samuel. He told him to go back and lay down and if the Lord speak again, tell the Lord uh, for thy servant hear. Speak Lord, thy servant hear. Amen? Timeless truth that if God is dealing with us, we need to ask the Lord, speak uh, speak to me. I hear you. Uh, and when you do that, the Lord knows that he has your attention and he'll begin to speak. The Lord will begin to open up to you the revelation. He'll begin to give to you the vision. You follow me? It's necessary that you have a vision from the Lord. It's necessary that you know what the Lord is calling you for and what to do. It's necessary. But in order to find it, you got to seek it. Ask, and it shall what? Seek, and ye shall what? Knock, and the door shall be what? Open. You won't you won't get it until you seek, until you ask, until you knock. God will be calling you. He'll be calling you, but 
but you have to respond to him. How many times God has been calling us and we, we put them on hold? We put them on pause. Huh? We back him up. I remember one time I was preaching. Young, young preacher. I think this is my third sermon. And I thought I had it. <laughs> oh boy, I thought I had it. And, 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 and as I was preaching, getting ready to open up the word of God, uh, the Holy Ghost started moving in on me. And I said, oh, ho, oh, oh, wait a minute, Lord, not right now. Hold on for a minute. Oh, I ain't done yet. Huh? And <laughs> the Holy Ghost backed off of me. And then when I thought that, okay, now you can come on in, Holy Ghost, what do you think the Holy Ghost did? Stay where he was. Say, you got it, you have it. <laughs> Taught me a lesson. Taught me a valuable lesson. Follow me? 
So he is trying to correct them. Notice then, if one of you sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Who shall make intercession for him? Uh, notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of his father. Notice, notice, this is what this is what struck fear in my heart. They hearken not unto the voice of their father because the Lord would slay them. They had literally gone too far. There's a point of no return. You follow me? That's scary. There's a point of no return. That's scary. The Lord had uh, already made up in his mind what he was going to do. So it didn't matter what those boys did up to that point. That's deep. That was sobering to me. Not that I'm out there doing this and out there doing that, but the Bible says, let a man examine himself. Lord, have I gone too far? Am I at the precipice? <laughs> Am I, is my foot on the edge? Wherein I have done too much. The people that have done too much, they ignore all the warning signs and don't repent. Don't turn. You follow me? Um, what's his name? Judas had gone too far. Even though he repented, huh? gone too far, still hung himself. Files gushed out. Esau sold his birthright. Gone too far. Amen? God said, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated, even in the womb, because God knew what he was going to do. Gone too far. Amen? We don't want to go too far. Follow me? And that's what Eli did uh, concerning his sons. And, and the judgment was is that his household would cease. He would die. His children would die. Amen? Gone too far. I got it. All right, let's go back. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You don't want to go too far. You want to heed, take heed to the vision of God. It's necessary for your life. Amen? All right, let's move back. Let's drop down then. I'm almost done here with this particular lesson. Uh, let's drop down. Verse 19. If you haven't said amen. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 19. It says, and Samuel, this is when uh, uh, Eli had called unto Samuel and told Samuel, I need to hear what God has, has spoke to you. Tell me everything that he said. And, and Samuel told him everything that he said. All right. Now, verse 19. And he says, and Samuel grew. See that? He grew. Timeless truth. If you continue with the Lord, you will grow. You will grow in knowledge. You will grow in wisdom. You will grow in revelation. Some of us have a hard time discerning the voice of God. But as long as you continue with him, timeless truth, you'll begin to know him. The more you study his word, the more he will reveal himself to you. But the key is, you must obey what he's revealing. Amen? If you don't reveal what God is showing you, 
you won't receive the next revelation. Follow me? Because it deals with faithfulness. When we're talking about faithfulness, faithfulness means that in this sense that you will comply with the word of God. Be faithful. Discharge your duties. Amen? Amen? 
Because that's his purpose of showing up. Am I right? Uh, because he wants you to be better. Am I right? Uh, now, also, God will, uh, God will warn you in that, in that morning hours and tell you you need to do A, B, and C. Amen? God will do that for you as well. So you got to listen. Amen? And, and, and do what he says. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. I remember uh, one of Sister Louise's testimonies. She said, Pastor the Lord woke me up in the morning, told me to put my best dress on and go meet so-and-so and have a meet with them and tell them thus and thus. Amen? And, and she did just that. And she came out more than a conqueror. Uh, the Lord will do that. Amen? Uh, he'll tell you what to do. Amen? But you got to be listening. Amen? You got to be willing to hear. Amen? All right. Let me move on. Uh, Samuel grew and the Lord was with him in his assignment. When you pay attention to what God wants you to pay attention to, God will, and as you grow, God will be with you. Amen? He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. But if you get off the beaten path, God will leave you. I know the word says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. What I'm talking about is uh, if you're not following him, he certainly ain't going to follow you. Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, he'll try to rescue you. He'll try to bring you back. But he won't be with you in the power of his might. Amen? Y'all with me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Dude, his will won't be accomplished in your life. Provision. You'll always be lacking. Always in trouble. Have you know, you know people like that? Always lacking. Always in trouble. Like a dark cloud is over them all the time. Why? Because they, they're not walking with God. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to be one of those people that everywhere I go somewhere, I get hurt. <laughs> I need to go somewhere and get some victories. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. It's like the preaching. I love it. Uh, uh, one of the uh, great preacher I admire. He said, now, you know, he was teaching a ministerial class about preaching. He said, uh, you know, every now and then you're going to have a bad sermon, but you shouldn't have a bad sermon all the time. <laughs> then if you have a bad sermon all the time, you, you got to question whether or not you, 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 you know, you, 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 in this, you in this thing with God. Amen? But he had his major victory against Goliath at a young age. Huh? Y'all with me? Uh, doesn't matter. What matters is your faithfulness. That's some victories under your belt. Amen? Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. All right. Any questions on our lesson? Thank you, Lord. We certainly do praise God and thank God uh, for your, those that are tuning in on today. Amen. And we'll be moving forward. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen.